Vision. Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over the earliest show. Dave's Obsession! Dave's Obsession of the Homo Moment! For those of you who missed it, Earliest Show is a recent Funny or Die miniseries created by and starring Ben Schwartz, whose highest profile role is one of the voices of BB-8, but come on, we all know you think of him as Jean Ralphio. I made my money the old-fashioned way. I got run over by Alexis! The series was directed by Schwartz and sponsored by Cap'n Crunch. Oh, right, uh, since this is something of a controversial subject among my class of video makers, by which I mean the nobody offers us money class, I should mention that earliest show is technically branded content. But the branding is mostly unobtrusive and doesn't really affect the content of the show itself, other than brief appearances in fake commercials for cereal adjacent products, and an in-universe sponsorship of one of the talk show's recurring segments. See? Product placement can be used to add to the verisimilitude. I don't know why I'm pretending I'm getting paid to drink this. Schwartz plays Josh Bath, who co-hosts a way-too-early morning talk show alongside Samantha Newman, played by Lauren Lapkus, who you know from the Comedy Bang Bang podcast and TV series, as well as Orange is the New Black and being the good part of Jurassic World. The show also stars Funny or Die mainstay Joe Hartzler as the amazingly awkward producer Mark, and a cavalcade of guest stars as the show's guests. The talk show format is a classic parody target of sketch comedy, and the notion of Schwartz and Lapkus playing the bubbly host of an insipid morning show made this series a must-watch the moment I heard about it. And I would have been satisfied with it as a one-off sketch, or as a recurring segment that ran itself into the ground after hundreds of episodes, but instead of either of those two extremes, what I got was a limited-run series that actually blurs the lines between recurring sketch and short-form narrative. Uh, Alright, Mark, keep the comedy to us, buddy. <sighs> Among comedy fans, there can sometimes be something of a stigma against recurring sketches, particularly on certain long-running sketch TV shows, and it's a generalization, of course, but the basic notion is that subsequent installments of a recurring sketch tend to just follow the same beats that got laughs in the original sketch without much in the way of growth or variety, and sketch characters tend to be fairly one note without much room for growth or exploration beyond the original installment. And the early show does set up a sketch formula that each installment follows. Josh and Sam chit chat. You told me you buy the cat outfits first, mm -hmm. and, then and then you show your own outfits. Exactly, to match. Yeah, but why not opposite? Why not buy your outfits and then show the tiny versions? They retract the news story from the previous day. We showed a photograph of a kitten sitting inside of a kangaroo's pouch. Let's show that photograph one more time. Let's look at her. Oh, Aww. buff. Oh, buff. Aww. <laughs> Turns out it's photoshopped. That is photoshopped. Not real. They share a new news story they'll retract the next day. Doctors are saying, well, you know how you walk upstairs? Yeah, like this. Hubba, hubba, hubba. Yeah, hubba. they're saying more like this. Heebie, heebie, heebie. Walk on the side. They respond to tweets on the social wall. I think my sister is cute. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, Follow-up question, what are you gonna do about it? Follow-up question, you gonna be a man and ask her out? Guys, 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 let's keep, let's move forward. Sure. There's a commercial, a celebrity interview, a try it at home segment, rinse and repeat. A strong formula for a talk show parody sketch, and it could have been hilarious even if that was all there was to it, but Schwartz had bigger ideas. He accepts your recurring sketch formula, but defies your notion that there can't be character growth. I've spoken before about how much I love the ability to use the confines of a seemingly formulaic structure to explore longer-term storytelling and character growth, and despite only being six episodes long, the earliest show manages to weave a solid story arc throughout its repeated tropes. In the first episode, Josh and Sam are overflowing with the forced joyfulness morning show hosts are required to showcase, but at the end of the episode, Josh faces unexpected heartbreak, and he spends the rest of the series grieving. As character arcs go, the stages of grief is an old classic, and it keeps the talk show parody fresh by ensuring that Josh always has a new reaction to the nonsense around him. How can I tell if a guy likes me? Hashtag earliest show. They flirt with you. They're, they, they love you. They take care of you. Okay, they love you. They take care of you. Oh, that's funny. They love you. They take care of you. What's I don't know how to and the series is a testament to Schwartz's versatility as a performer as he commits 100% to each of these different attitudes. I'm looking for my wife. I think she called here. Hello? Ooh, you got the wrong number, sir. No, it's not a number. It's a post. How do you even think this is a phone call? You typed. You typed. 
And while Sam doesn't have as central an arc over the course of the series, Lapkus is brilliant as ever as she desperately tries to steer the ship back on course, warding off both Josh's uncooperativeness and Mark's incompetence with a TV-ready smile on her face. Maybe Mark's instincts were right for once. I mean, I don't know everything under the sun, you know, I'm just doing well, my best. Well, you prove that every day. As much as I would love an infinite supply of this cast in this scenario, I respect Schwartz and his team for using the format to tell a single story. And I can still give myself a peek at what a hundred more of these would look like by watching the 64 minute long blooper reel, loaded with ad lib upon ad lib that are each funnier than anything I've ever written, or ever will write. All right, well, last night I got into a bit of a, a, bit of a pickle. Mm. Okay, so I got this. You get into an actual pickle by mistake? I, I went inside of a pickle and it became a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's not how it works. It'll take a while. What are your thoughts on death? I don't think it happens. That's my theory. Yeah, I might even have a date next week. What? What's wrong, Mark? Huh? Oh, it slipped out of my hands. Pendant slipped out. You threw that. I watched what? it. Oh, no. So was it a clicker? I tried to click it. You clicked it off? Uh-huh. Yeah, Pick it up one time. I want to see you try to click for real, because I can't imagine that's what happened. Oh, so you never write. God, comedic genius can be intimidating. So next time you have a free hour or so, I highly recommend watching through the earliest show. And I think by the time you get to the end of it, you'll be more than ready to spend your next free hour or so watching through the outtakes and extended scenes. So enjoy it all, and until next time, this is Dave saying good night and good morning. Mm -hmm.